Ah, welcome to this uh, session where I will be talking about the first of five steps, you know, to help you launch your fashion e-commerce business. And this is the holy grail of success in the fashion e-commerce space. And the first of those steps is having a product that sells itself. It can never be overemphasized. My name is Laoye Curtis, and I'm your host in the Fashion Millionaire's Room, which is my podcast series to help fashion entrepreneurs build successful multi-million enterprises. Okay, so welcome once again, and thank you for listening to me. I've already done a summary where I touched on the five steps together. However, I want to break them down one by one. So the first step, right, in my five-step framework for launching your fashion enterprise business, uh, fashion uh, e-commerce business is having products that sell itself. It don't matter whether you are into bespoke tailoring or you are into ready-to-wear or you are into fashion training or you're into fabric sales, or you're even into fashion equipment. As long as what you're selling is a tangible product that people can pay for, that meets the needs of the people you're trying to sell to, okay? And it is what they want, then you are very likely to succeed. You are very likely to succeed. One of the mistakes I see a lot of people make is that they glorify their creativity more than common sense. What I mean by that is I've seen a lot of fashion entrepreneurs that just love the ideas of what kind of products they can come up with, the designs they can generate, the training program outline that they have, and they believe that by the time they are done, the, well, the person buying their products right will be mesmerized. Sorry to break it to you. Most of the time, you are only mesmerized by your own, uh, by your, by, by your own uh, pride. You are only mesmerized by your own, uh, you know, um, uh, self, you know, appraisal or self-glory or something like that. I don't even know how to explain that. But the thing is this. When you celebrate your ability to create something more than the people that you are creating it for, you are writing for a four. Okay? I learned from Peter Drucker. You can search for him, Peter Drucker. That is Peter, then D-R-U-C-K-E-R. I mean, that is the father of management consulting or business management in the 20th century. The man, I read one of his books where he said that the first road to success in business is for you to have a product that sells itself. You have done 70% of your job of selling if the product can sell itself. Yes. How can you uh, how can you know a product that sells itself? Oh, very simple. The product is touching on everything on the checklist of the person it is intended to. Now, let me break it down to you. Number one, it is solving a problem that the person you want to sell it to is desperately looking for answers to. That's number one. Number two, it, it will enhance the life of the person, okay? Make them look better than they used to be. That's number two. That helps you to know you have a product that sells itself. And number three, you must have shown it to a few people who fall into your target audience to get their view. And they validated it that this, they like it. They may not buy from you. But the fact that they like it, it means other people like them out there who are like them and fall within your target audience, your ideal customers, when they cite that product, they will buy. Now, let me add uh, psychology of, of uh, selling to, to it. 
People buy right with emotion. They buy based on emotion. Then they try to justify their emotional decision with logic so they don't look stupid. Okay? There are many times you must have gone out shopping. You add a list of what you wanted to buy. But you come back home with a lot more things that you didn't plan to buy. Why? It is a forever issue when it comes to, you know, commerce. Because before ever you go out to do shopping or even just go out, you know, on your day-to-day -day activities, there are desires that you carry on the inside of you that you long for. Once your eyes set upon those things you've been dreaming of, there is no way you can control your emotions. You would have to be superman, superwoman to control your emotions. Now, the easiest way to control your emotion is if you are broke that time and you don't have the money to pay for it. God help you, you have a credit card. Then you would know how the demons in you will be unleashed. <laughs> you just go on the spending spree. We buy based on emotion, whether we're men or women. Yeah, we buy based on emotion. Don't ever forget that. Now, that's uh, on one level, okay? People buying based on emotion. On another level, you need to understand that um, the same way it applies to you, it also applies to your ideal customers. Yeah, same way it applies to you, it applies to your ideal customers. When they go out shopping, when they go out about their business on a day-to-day -day basis, when they stumble on your post on Facebook, on Instagram, as long as it is something they've always imagined, they've always dreamed of, and they've got some funds in their wallets, in their accounts at the time, there's every likelihood they will buy, especially when you have an offer that is irresistible. That means there's an offer that like, they go like, I don't want to miss this opportunity. The price may go back up again. Let me jump at it. Okay? So, psychology of selling is very important for anyone who wants to succeed, regardless of the kind of business you want. That's why I tell people that the things I teach can be applied in all the types of fashion businesses, all the types of businesses, other than fashion, really. You know? Yeah. It takes the wise to know that. So, um, anyways, I've given you some key points, right, relating to products that sell themselves or pro a product that sells itself. It has to be something that meets the needs and the wants of your target audience that they desperately want. Number two, it has to transform their lives. That's something that it can say transforms their lives when they buy from you. And uh, number three, uh, it has to be something that, uh, you know, uh, they've always dreamed of within their pocket size. Pocket size means their financial power, okay? Their ability to spend, their purchasing power, okay? And every other point in between. Now, the thing I want you to now please take note of is this. How do you then find out, uh, how do you then come up with these products that can sell themselves? Number one, listen to people. Listen to people, not just anybody. You listen to the people you desire to have as customers. Why should you be talking to someone whose um, desire does not go beyond Paying 10,000 Nero for a dress. When you have an idea of a 100,000 Nero dress, it means you are taking a good idea, a good product to the wrong audience. Okay? So be very clear from the get go who your target audience are. 
who your ideal customers are. Yes, ideal customers. They must be people who need what you're selling and can afford the price you are selling at. That's an ideal customer. Okay? Yeah, so once you know that, um, what you can do next is, do, is, is to research, interview, talk to them, find out what they want. I you know, mentioned it earlier in my other recording that I had someone, you know, who commented on my YouTube channel. She watched one of my videos. I mean, a two-hour video on YouTube. She watched it from beginning to the end. And she let me know that you've got great content. You have a lot in you you can teach people that we can learn from you. But please, these videos are rather long. In this part of the world, people are very careful how they spend their data. Can you do shorter videos? We will consume them. I listened and I decided, okay, I am going to devise a means whereby I am teaching a long class, I mean a long hour class, okay? But at the same time, I'm recording them in snippets so that by the time I upload them online, they will be easily consumed. And before you know it, I can rack up over 4,000 hours on YouTube, which is the minimum requirement for them to start paying content creators. So you need to have at least 1,000 subscribers. I'm well over that. And 4,000 hours logged in of views, you know, people viewing your content. This feedback I got from a YouTube, you know, uh, commenter, is helping me in my YouTube journey. Can you see? When people like what you sell and they give you feedback, please always listen. That is how to come up with products that will sell themselves. Back in 2020, December, I gathered over 800 people in my uh, Telegram community, you know, to teach um, the business of ready to wear. And I was thinking at the time that, hey, I'm going to get, um, you know, a lot of them, just like 50 people out of these 800 people who are going to pay for my 20K course, ready to wear on wraps. And then that would be a million era PD. I mean, it was, that was the thought in my head at the time. And then I listened to my own advice. I picked my phone and called up to 10 of the people people on the platform asking them where are you missing it in your ready to wear business by the time we were done talking i found out that amongst all of them there was the same problem many of them had spent hundreds of thousands and lost it many of them had given out all the ready to wear collections they produced and they are very scared to double into ready to wear again so i discovered that the problem, number one, is how to create collections that will sell. Can you see? It still comes down to creating products that sell itself. So I said, I'll teach them how to create collections that will sell out, even before they go to full production. So number two, I found out that many of them, many of them, I mean, I'm talking about seven people out of ten, ran Facebook ad back. One person in particular spent a hundred thousand euro on Facebook ad. She's so bruised by that experience that she doesn't want to go near Facebook adverts ever again. She spent 100,000, she earned 10,000 in sales. What happened to the other 90,000? Gone. Gone, gone, and gone. I mean, I talked to a lady, she said she spent 1.2 million. She rented a, a store for 800,000, then spent 400,000 creating ready to wear collections and her marriage was in trouble at the time because the money was gone i mean i talked to people real people that needed what i'm selling not people that are into bespoke tailoring that don't have any interest in ready to wear i talked to people who needed red who wanted to go into ready to wear now not all of them bought my courses and for the life of me that doesn't affect me you know why because I have answers that when they are ready, they will still come back and get. You dig? Now, 
Long story short, I discovered that many of them don't know how to sell online. So I had to teach them how to sell online by setting up an online store and also driving traffic, which is just the secret. You can drive traffic organically. You can drive traffic with adverts. Most of the people that have done seven-figure sales in their ready-to-wear lunches through my classes, my coaching, my trainings, did it. When I interviewed these 10 people, I found these three issues as their biggest challenges. Then I turned it into an online course. Then I called about three of them. Yeah, it was three of them. And I asked them, how much should I sell this? Oh, did it shock you? I'm having to ask my own um, potential clients how much they should pay. It's because people will pay for something that is within their pocket side that they desperately need solutions to. So you've done your job. When they suddenly can realize that, hey, this person's got my solution and I, I can afford. Even if I am disappointed by what I get, at least I won't uh, feel too odd. It's money I can throw away. And then they come in and they go like, oh my God, we got way, way more than what we bought. So which means I under promise over deliver. Would you believe that when I interviewed people, these uh, fashion entrepreneurs, they told me that I should charge 5,000. I was even thinking, oh, let me make it 3K because I've tried 3K price points, you know, some years back that got me like 300 people sign up and all. And they were like, no, people will take you as desperate coach if you sell at 3K. And I'm like, okay, what do we do 6K? They said 6K will look too big because of this. You know, they were like, let's make it 5K flat rate at a time. That if I should put it at 6K, it will look too expensive. If I put it at uh, 3K, my initial intention, it will look too cheap. So I listened to the advice and I ran my campaign. I had a 20,000 Nera training program already recorded that I was planning to sell initially. I realized that the audience I was trying to sell to at the time could not and will not afford it. So I went back to the drawing board and came up with a product that we co-created. You should be talking to your customers. You should be talking to your customers or potential customers because that is where wisdom in pricing and sales come. Having said all of this, I hope you've learned something about creating a product that sells itself. I hope you've learned from that. I have this covered for those that are going into ready to wear in my 90 days to launch uh, course and even the ready to wear and the budget course. You know, where we broke it down specifically, what you should do. I should, I should talk to people within your target audience to find out what they want so they can you know, buy from you. I mean, one of my um, clients, right, uh, uh, Bossidi, you know, already shared our experience. So guys, these things work, okay? They've always worked and they will still work for you. I hope you've learned enough on how to create products that sell itself. I thought it was just gonna be a 10 minute thing. But well, the funny thing is that it's past <laughs> 10 minutes for this. Oh, my. Wow, 90 minutes. I need to keep quiet here. Thank you so much for listening to me. God bless you. Mm -hmm.